Founded back in late of 2004, the X Factor took the world by storm in terms of popularity. Being a new candidate born into the genre of reality TV, it quickly became one of the most popular shows in the UK. Both these shows were cooked with a key ingredient however, that being false and fabricated scenarios for entertainment value, keeping people hooked to their lame meaningless cliffhangers that got the public and media riled up made their viewership skyrocket. Cause let's face it, if you have watched any of these shows, it's mostly to watch the crazy and angry rude people in the auditions, right? Let's sort this out. I am not a number, I'm a human being. That's okay. As humans, we eat that kind of shit up subconsciously. Faking or exaggerating reality TV is nothing new, and it's mostly a common fact known by most. It's harmless. Or is it? Let's look at the lives of individuals who claim to have been manipulated, bullied and mentally abused by showrunners for the sake of some public entertainment and drama, but without prior consent or knowledge. I'd like you to meet Zoe Alexander, or perhaps you know her as Pink. Zoe became infamous after her audition on The X Factor back in 2012. Remember when the world was gonna end? Why didn't it, man? They painted her out to be a stroppy, angry, psycho, crazy ass bitch who couldn't take no as an answer. The singer who desperately wanted to get out of being a pink tribute act by performing a pink song? It never made sense to me until a few months ago when I found a video uploaded by Zoe herself. After auditioning for The X Factor, she quickly received an offer to appear on the show. She went down to Thames Studios and took part in a singing audition and made it to the next stage. She was then asked to submit five songs of her choice. Okay? <clears throat> of her choice. Got it? After she did, she was then told it would be best if she sang a song from Pink. What? She was then manipulated into believing that it would go down great and everyone would love her, blah blah blah, spoilers. It didn't. She set off by train and arrived at their strictly agreed time of 6am and they were met by no other than a... Uh, no one. Apart from the security who let them in, as time went on they were eventually greeted by confused staff who had no idea why they were there so early. They were then taken into a waiting room and then moved into another waiting room. I don't know, maybe the one downstairs was being occupied by Simon Cowell counting his millions or something. They were strictly told they weren't allowed to leave or they wouldn't be seen. But they didn't bring any food or drinks with them and they all became dehydrated. And the company didn't provide any for them either. Which is dumb because you know, singing and being dehydrated don't get along with each other. You're asking to sound like a 12 year old hitting puberty for the first time. She was finally interviewed and all they wanted to talk about was Pink. One of the questions asked was, do you think Pink was bullied in school? What kind of question is that? Like, what the f***? He's some, and I, cause I, cause I was, the thing is, I was bullied in school, I was bullied really badly in school. And it just, it, I, it made my confidence levels drop and I just, I, I, I just, I didn't like speaking to people, I didn't like doing anything. I, I, I was just, I was a bit of a hermit, I didn't, didn't have many friends and he somehow turned that around to pink. He said, do you think pink was bullied in school? Well. So it was totally inappropriate and just plain f***ing odd. She was then greeted by British television presenter Caroline Flack who offered her some water and urged her that she didn't have to go through with the audition. As if she too knew what her entire act was being broadcast for. Zoe, blinded by excitement, decided to do it anyway and went to wait backstage for her audition to begin. Before going on to stage, she was then given a pet talk by Ollie Murs who told her to beg? If she does get rejected by the judges. He went further with this and claimed that she should get down on her knees and cry and, and beg. 
Seriously? Zoe ain't a dog. It does make sense why so many contestants start begging or telling their sob stories, etc. Let's get juicier. This wasn't mentioned in her video, but both Ollie and Caroline Flack, the woman who almost tried to help Zoe, retired from the X Factor after the season ended. Perhaps they didn't agree with how things were being running and they decided to get out while they could. She then went on to stage and before she'd even started, the judges had already picked up on the pink act and claimed she was copying pink with her looks. Which to me anyway is ridiculous. Celebrities cannot copyright a haircut and pink's haircut ain't even that iconic anyway. Have you ever worn a suit even to your nan's funeral? Well guess what? You're a copycat. Which by the way, that was a real point which two judges tried to make on the X Factor, but on the Australia version. I am disgusted at how much you have copied my husband. From the hair to the suit, do you not have any value or respect for originality? Oh my god, is that, is that a fringe, Natasha? You stole that from every middle-aged woman ever. But Natasha makes an interesting comment. You're a laughing stock. You're a laughing stock. You're a laughing <laughs> Oops. That could have just been a cover up too, because Louis Walsh got away with borderline sexual harassment in an interview and he wasn't sacked. <laughs> Man, sexual harassment, aha, that's so, that's so epic, man, aha. I find it amazing that the woman was able and brave enough to call him out for his disgusting sexual harassment, but it seemed like the people around him didn't give two shits about it. Louis, you're cracking me up, you know, the part where <laughs> you, you commit a crime? Oh, that's, ah, that's so funny. Also, even worse, they edited this out in the re-uploaded version. You know, she's up against people that have had a lot of experience, that are older than her, and she's got some growing to do, you know? Don't do that, not So not necessarily... I was a nodding, I was Oh, he was. No! After singing her Pink song, which was destined to go wrong, shit started to hit the fan. It's edited to look as though the audience were just as disappointed as the judges, however, Zoe claimed that they were loving it. It's very confusing for me because I did feel like I was watching a Pink tribute act. Should we get a second song? Yeah. She's asked to sing a second song but is greeted with her monitor being switched off which happens in both of her performances. Basically means speakers facing her so she could hear herself singing which are extremely important in any auditorium were turned off. Meaning she was completely lost in the song. Not only this, they then played her second choice in the wrong key. Which total f her second audition. After this, she has a meltdown on stage and ends up throwing her microphone. This is the clip that Zoe claims to have been edited. Looking back at it, there is a lot of stuff that doesn't look right. I mean, the biggest clue to me is her back morphing. Her hand here just <laughs> disappears. I get it, like it's motion blur, but seriously, where did her arm go? But I'll leave it up to you. I personally think the footage has been tampered with. It's also worth noting that she did admit to throwing the microphone, so I wouldn't really devalue an entire story because of that. After this, she pushes the cameraman at her face and they edit it so much to look like a bloody earthquake hit or something. Like seriously, she must have been the Hulk to make a camera shake like that. She then pulls down the truss, you know, the truss that wobbles before she even gets to it. You know, the stuff that's used to hold lighting up, but I guess they just had it on display because it looked nice, I guess. Leaving that there alone is a huge safety hazard, but hey, who cares about impaling a contestant? I mean, that would be a great cliffhanger. But she basically went into a blinding panic attack and ended up falling down the stairs, laying on the floor, repeating the words, I've said that over and over, I'm gonna kill myself, please get this camera out of my face, I'm gonna kill myself. And that was the point where they put the axe over my mouth. At this point, you would at least thought the cameraman would have had some sympathy, but the sociopaths known as the producers urged the cameraman to continue to record her for the sake of some good old public entertainment. And honestly, I believe this. 
in a separate video uploaded by a pretty big YouTuber called Trevi, who was a contestant also back in 2012 but on the US version, they came out with a video exposing the X Factor for filming their seizure. I fainted from the 5 hour energy and somehow the producers all found out about it and all the camera, all the crew started surrounding me. No but for real, like I was, I fainted and I was just shaking and just... I had some sort of like allergic reaction. I, I just I was dehydrated. I don't really know what happened. The producers, <laughs> bitch, I will never forget this. As they're pointing the camera at us, they tell my mom and they say, "Hey, uh, Nicole, can you look at him like like directly, look down, and um." look a little bit more concerned. My point is, all the X Factor seems to care about is their entertainment value. And don't take safety into consideration. You can actually hear her saying it slightly as they bleep her mouth, trying to paint it out like she was swearing at the camera crew and producers uncontrollably. And you can also hear her dad saying something along the lines of it being disgusting what they were doing. After this happened, not much happened as the episode hadn't aired yet. She had been interviewed and told her story long ago, but it was too late. Within 24 hours, her entire reputation to locals in her area was tarnished. People didn't want to even associate with her, and I can't even begin to imagine the harassment she got from people out in public. So he claimed to have been deeply affected by this mentally and began to not even leave her home. The X Factor got their bag, and their disgusting exploitation was complete. I wanted to talk about Ariel Burdett, as I'm pretty certain you have seen or at least heard of the clip that still surfaces of her today. This took back in 2008, and the media gave Ariel hard backlash. Though it was parody, and Ariel herself admitted that this was fake and a character she made up, it still seems like it had some lasting effects on her. Mostly from friends or family who claimed that the X Factor appearance tainted her. Sadly, Ariel isn't with us anymore. In November of 2019, she took her own life. I am not here to point fingers at anyone, with the sheer amount of mention of X Factor in most of her death articles. I felt like I needed to cover it. I was genuinely gutted to stumble upon the news of Ariel's passing when researching this video, and I hope Ariel is in a better place now and has found peace. I wanted to briefly skim over the contract that is required to sign when auditioning for Britain's Got Talent and I know they technically aren't the same show and I'm like 99% sure they're run by the same people so they are very similar. YouTuber Mess Music TV uploaded a video back in 2017 exposing the disgusting contract. There is a lot but I wanted to showcase some of the most shocking ones to me. If you make it through to the semi-finals, they then ban you from releasing any content whatsoever without their written consent. Do you ever wonder why we don't hear from people after they after Brisco Time has happened? It's because legally they cannot actually say anything online without being allowed to by Psycho and the company. They either had to get consent or be released from the contract. But it does make so much sense why people go through the X Factor and don't win suddenly vanish in the wind. They get their spotlight but are then silenced afterwards to slow fade away and become irrelevant. Number 18, this is just saying that they can exploit your image in any way they see fit, they can alter, adapt or change it any way they want, which basically means that they can take a part of your story and just focus on that part rather than the other part. So imagine you've said something really heartfelt but then you said one thing that was kind of negative. They could take that negative aspect and only focus on that. This one links back to Zoe for me a lot as it seems like most of the stuff in her interview was pink centered when she tried to steer the conversation conversation away from it. I'll leave his video in the description below because he goes into it in a lot more detail. I also did slide into Zoe's DMs to see if I could get any more information and to my surprise she actually replied. She said to me that she never signed an NDA as mentioned just prior and she told me those are only signed once you get further into the competition aka like the semi-finals. She also told me she believes the mic scene is edited. I did ask for a follow up as she claims here as though they used a double of her to do the trust throwing scene which though it might seem like a stretch to some, it is interesting how they only showed the clip with one GoPro 240p bad quality iPhone 2 looking ass. My point is, the use of low quality means key facial features could easily have been lost in the footage. I did mention this and ask for a follow up but 
Uh, she didn't reply. That's where the story kinda ends for now though. For real, I really do appreciate Zoe for replying to me and helping me with this video. Zoe has said she will talk more on the X Factor in the future, and I do hope some sort of justice is served to whoever was responsible for all of this. If you did enjoy this video, then I'd really appreciate if you could